Hello, and welcome to the first in a series of films about the standard level organic topic from the IB Diploma Chemistry course. Um, we're going to be looking at a whole load of different compounds in this topic, and it's going to be useful to group those compounds in some way. So we're going to start off by looking at what we mean by homologous series. And hopefully by the end of this film, not only will you know the meaning of that term, but you'll also understand why members of a homologous series ought to have similar, similar chemical properties to one another and why their physical properties ought to display a kind of trend. OK, let's start off by briefly introducing the whole topic of organic chemistry. Now, most people realise that organic compounds have got something to do with carbon. The ones that I suppose we're perhaps most familiar with usually are the hydrocarbons, which contain just carbon and hydrogen, um, but there are others that contain oxygen and nitrogen. However, it's not correct to say that organic chemistry is about all molecules that contain carbon because strictly speaking carbon itself in the graphite and diamond forms and Buckminster fullerenes and also the oxides of carbon like carbon monoxide and carbon dioxide and ions like the carbonate ion don't really count as organic compounds by convention. Anyway, it's I suppose not completely wrong to say that this is the chemistry of compounds that contain carbon, but there are some exceptions. Anyway, um, when we look at all the different uh, carbon containing compounds, there's so many of them that it's useful to kind of organize them into families. And um, what I've done here in kind of three columns um, is just shown you a few uh, what are called space fill diagrams of some different families of organic compounds and here on the left we can see uh, three compounds that are all made of just carbon the black balls and hydrogen atoms they're the whites and what you can see is that we've got one carbon in this molecule two in that one and three in that one and I could make these chains very very long indeed and quite often the way we distinguish one member of a family from another is by how many carbons there are in the carbon chain here we've got another family of compounds. These not only have carbon and hydrogen in, but you can see that at the end of the molecule, they've got an oxygen atom bonded to the carbon and a hydrogen bonded to that oxygen. So we call, might call this an OH group. Okay, So this is another family of compounds that all have that in common. They've also got other things in common, but they've all got this particular feature in common. So we're putting compounds in families depending on their common features. And again, this third set all have a common feature, and that is that they've got carbon double bonded to one oxygen atom, okay, and single bonded to another oxygen atom, which is bonded to an OH. So these all have what we would call a COOH group, and as we'll see later, we call them the carboxylic acids. Anyway, that was really not to tell you too much about the families at this stage but just to tell you why we have these families and once we've grouped all our compounds into families we can say that we've put them into homologous series okay because a homologous series is a family of compounds but what's special about a homologous series homolog um, homologs have similar features okay so that's how we've grouped them together um, but their members will differ by CH2. So as we saw on the previous slide, we might have CH4, we might have C2H6. The, these are the first three molecules that I showed you on the left, C3H8. And if you look at them, the way that they are different is each one in turn is bigger than the last by CH2. Okay. They'll have similar chemical properties. Why will they have simi similar chemical properties? Because they've got similar features. They've got similar arrangements of atoms, and that means they'll react in similar ways. And their physical properties will display a pattern. Now, this is really important. We'll come on to it at the end of this film. Okay, but make sure that you remember what we mean by a homologous series. It's a really important definition to have in mind. Okay. Once again, just to illustrate this differing by CH2 thing, here we've got CH4, this is called methane. Okay, These are actually all alkanes, but we'll look at alkanes in more depth later. This is either can be written as CH3 joined to CH3, or as I wrote on the previous slide, C2H6. And this one could be written as CH3, CH2, CH3. 
or in other words C3H8. Lots of different ways of representing compounds, but what you can see is that as the chain gets longer by one carbon each time, the number of carbons increases by one, but the number of hydrogens in increases by two. So the members of a homologous series will differ by CH2 from the next one in turn. Having similar chemical properties, as we've just said, is to do with having similar arrangements of atoms. So here's a very complicated example, which you certainly wouldn't have to remember. But at the top we, here we can see progesterone, which is a hormone which the human body produces. It's very important in the menstrual cycle. And um, because the menstrual cycle is something that people like to play around with quite a lot, because of birth control and things like that, um, we have tried to synthesize chemicals that will imitate progesterone okay and here's one of them and you can see that the fact that it has a similar structure or similar features will mean it has similar chemical properties it will act like progesterone when we put it in someone's body so the similar chemical properties that we see in homologous series are to do with the fact that the molecules have similar features now, boiling point trends, this should be quite simple to explain if you remember something about intermolecular forces from the bonding topic. If you don't, it might seem a bit alien to you. Okay, but if these, so I've got uh, three carboxylic acids here, which I actually showed you earlier. These are three members of the carboxylic acid homologous series because one's got one carbon, the next one's got two, the next one's got three, but they've all got this feature at the end of them. Okay, now what's going to happen to their boiling points? Well, their boiling points will depend on their intermolecular forces. They'll all have the same kinds of intermolecular forces because they've all got the same features. But what we should know is that as the molecules get larger and their electron clouds get bigger, so their van der Waals forces will increase. And so we should notice that as we go down and or down this particular series and as the chain length increases, that the boiling points will increase as the chain length gets longer. Okay? So that's a really important fact to know about basically all homologous series. As the molecules get bigger, their boiling points increase because their van der Waals forces get stronger. Okay, so that's um, a film about homologous series. Hopefully it made sense. If you've got any questions or comments, please feel free to come and see me as soon as you can or to post a comment on YouTube.